Welcome to Multimodal 2021 and I will be talking to Charles from Unsworth and Michael from RMB about exporting from the UK to the EU. Welcome, Thank nice you. to see you. Yeah. So my first question is what are the main bottlenecks for UK companies? Yeah, so Brexit was no surprise um, to any of our customers and what we really found was they came to 1st of January, the trade agreement was agreed very last minute they felt and they really weren't ready for the border requirements. Everyone thought they're ready, but they really weren't. And the biggest bottleneck was, how do we make it easy for our customers to keep buying from us? And a lot of the challenge revolved around how we could put in place a process to remove the friction from it. And that's basically um, the real uh, piece that we're here today to share with you. Okay, and how do you remove the friction? Well, yeah, well ultimately, Michael and I uh, have entered into this sort of partnership where we are simplifying the documentation process okay. and actually uh, establishing a process that enables them to clear their cargo while it's on the ferry. So as soon as the truck rolls into Calais port, it's green and it rolls out and then it's in free circulation. So what that really means is that the exporter functions as the importer okay. and then when it delivers to its customer in the EU there's no onward customs control for their cargo which obviously removes the entire faff that Boris created with Brexit and so in my eyes it's actually you know quite a unique process but a lot of people are doing it we probably have you know 400 declarations a day that okay. are involved in this process and we see that steadily growing year on year and ultimately with Michael he'll come into the actual technicalities of the process and you know how a company can actually achieve it. So what, what are the technicalities? Because it sounds amazing. Well, um, the customs issue is definitely uh, something that UK exporters need to consider because it's a very uh, complicated issue. But it's, there's something that UK exporters forget about is about VAT, how they will deal with their taxes in the EU. And uh, the idea is to have um, the UK exporters uh, registered for VAT in France so that goods can be imported in their names into France without import VAT because the good thing with, with France is that uh, the UK um, companies are able to benefit from the import VAT exemption. They do not need to pay the import, uh, the import VAT and uh, once the goods are customs cleared, goods can be immediately reshipped uh, from immediately or not immediately from, from France to any other EU countries. And these goods um, are charged without any VAT because these goods are already put into free circulation. So uh, the UK exporters are able to sell their goods as if Brexit never happened and their clients are receiving these goods uh, like it was before uh, the 1st of, of January. So that's a very good thing about selling DDP. So uh, the, 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 we need to have uh, a good customs clearance solutions that we have with, with Answers and also a good VAT solution. And uh, we're working as, as a team and we believe that this solution is probably the best, the best e efficient solution that we could find for the UK. So it's, it sounds quite unique. How easy is it to explain to people? Do people come in and say yeah. we've got this problem? <laughs> or do I, you go to them and say we've got a solution? I think on? with ed anything to do with Brexit, it always sounds more complicated than it really is and really needs to be. Ultimately, there are a lot of tick boxes, a lot of compliance that has to be achieved. But from my side, ultimately, do you want to sell to customers in the EU easily? And number two, do you want to discourage them from buying from right. other EU sources of supply? If the answer is yes, you've got to go through the one or two hours of training and process building. And then ultimately, you've got a viable solution uh, in selling to customers based in the EU. It's been so popular, in fact, that a lot of trade associations, even some of the UK leading trade associations, have really put their stamp behind it. Uh, the regional government in France have put their stamp behind it. And also, very recently, the Port of Calais have put their okay. name behind the process. So really, that shows the credibility of the solution, but also how they believe it's the future running into 2022. Okay. So from us, within Unsworth and RMB, we see the more that we can spread the message uh, being better and that's really what we're up to here today. Okay, so uh, would you say it's quite a unique solution that you've come up with here? I, I, it's, a, it's a collaboration that maybe isn't, isn't one that you would think of normally or? I, I would say so. I think um, Michael and I come the 10th of January was actually when we first met really okay. properly 
and we were I was very surprised just how easy the process was and suddenly I think we now have like nearly six or seven hundred customers using this process on a daily weekly basis so suddenly going from zero to six hundred new customers yeah. in six months is, is, is quite remarkable so I think the figures speak Bigger more for the sales. uniqueness than anything else. Yeah. And um, we, we also believe that France is probably um, the best, um, best country of the import for the UK exporters because France is offering a lot, a lot of benefits for UK exporters. Um, uh, one of the arguments uh, we would like to put forward about France is that there is no obligation to set up a bank warranty uh, for UK exporters in France if, if they want to sell goods on a DDP basis. And that's a very good thing. We have a wonderful tax treaty between France and the UK so that goods can be cleared uh, very easily in, in France and then can be sold from a VAT perspective very easily as well. So there are lots of things we like to put forward about, about France because we know that France, the reputation of France has not always been very, very good. Um, uh, we know that French people can be seen as people that make things more complicated than others, but here I think we really, we really have the right solutions. And some of our clients that decided initially to go and clear their goods in the Netherlands because they believed uh, it would be uh, easier for them, or in Belgium, they've decided that France uh, would be probably their best uh, alternative. So, and obviously the last argument is that France and the UK are very, very close from each other and that the, the goods can be cleared using the smart border system, which is an incredibly um, well, well made system uh, so that goods can be cleared uh, at, at, when, when the goods are in, in the truck, uh, they are pre-notified, pre-cleared, and they do not need to have uh, any T1 agreements uh, for, 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 for these goods. So I think that uh, if we put all these benefits together, uh, we have a very, very um, a good solution for all, all UK companies. Okay. So um, have you got any feedback from people? What does it actually mean to them to use this solution yeah, in terms so of hours, days? Absolutely. So we specialize a lot in the very short shelf life products where um, a lamb might be slaughtered in the UK and it will be made into you know, chops for, for the meat markets in France and every six hours the value of that product goes down 20%. Right. So just by cutting out you know, hours, we, we are maintaining very high values to people's cargo. The same could be said about seafood, uh, live animals, etc. So ultimately, um, it's a process that doesn't actually cost any more, it avoids the use of transit documents, and is quicker, more digital than other methods. And so ultimately, there are very few downsides. The only downside that some people say is actually getting their head around the initial part of the process, understanding the paperwork requirements. Once they've got over that hurdle, it's actually surprisingly um, you know, uh, good. And what we always find is one customer always recommends us to 10 of their friends. Ten of their friends, okay. But that, so what you're basically, it's a cost-effective solution, which is genuinely saving people time, money, and keeping the supply chain moving, which we now know we need to do, right? Correct, and I think on the food side of things, the UK government starting to recognise the solution as maintaining our food exports and maintaining that flow, which is ever becoming quite, you know, quite notable in the press, where there's a lot of um, noise about the delays, etc. But actually, using this digital process avoids it. So, if they do get fully behind it, we can we can see great things running into 2022. Okay, especially with all the changes coming in January, right? Ab ab absolutely. You know, I think January is an, an additional hurdle for UK businesses and at the end of the day the British population voted for Brexit. I now don't know whether they quite knew what they were getting when they took that vote. That was my other question. So I, I think that maybe people feel that they may be not prepared for January. Are you, how are you helping your customers yeah. to prepare for that? <laughs> I think ultimately um, customs brokers um, thrive in the unknown and the ones that are able to educate their customers and make sure they've done all the, the testing and trials pre you know first of November almost they yeah. will be the ones that will be ready and so a lot of our customers now are in the testing uh, phases where we're doing a lot of trials and dummy runs and it's all about making sure everyone knows what they've got to do in that chain and the, the, the person that lets us down is the weakest link right. and unfortunately that has been Paulie is not doing what they said they were going to do, taking shortcuts. And that just costs uh, our customers more money. 
but ultimately, a bit of preparedness, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm very excited to be booking my ski holiday for around about then, <laughs> just to make sure that, that I'm that cool about it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, is there any way to import to the EU without having a legal address in the EU? Yes, absolutely. There is absolutely no requirement uh, to set up a, uh, an EU entity or a permanent establishment in the EU. Um, uh, because uh, UK exporters have the possibility to appoint a fiscal representative and uh, this fiscal representative needs to have some very formal accreditation from the French tax authorities and we have such accreditations from them. Uh, so the, the, the good thing about fiscal representation is that companies are fully able to sell their goods in the EU without having a permanent establishment in the EU and they also remain taxable for corporate tax purposes in the UK. So they, they absolutely no issue paying any corporate tax in France or in any other EU member state. And um, what can Unsworth and RMB do in order to help their clients to ship DDP to EU and France? So without sounding like a stuck record, ultimately we are positioning ourselves as one of the few specialists able to achieve this for, for companies. I think the uniqueness of the partnership as well between ourselves and R&B is we are solidly working together, there's not a blame culture where yes for sure different people have things ready at different stages of the documentation flow, we're really working to constructively get cargo to where it needs to be, uh, avoiding all the extra costs and delays, especially for very tricky cargo that typically a lot of other people would back away from. We kind of really quite like it because it provides a slightly different uh, dimension uh, to it. Yes, and the documentation is probably a, a, a key point in, in this process. And the good thing with um, with uh, with Charles' team is that uh, they they know what the documentation is re is required. They they know how the process is. They know how to import goods in the name of a foreign company. Not all customs brokers are able to do this. So the good thing with them is that we are we we, we are fully confident that the, that the paperwork will be okay because this paperwork will give us the possibility to uh, claim uh, any VAT back or to have uh, the, the, the VAT properly handled. And that's very crucial for these uh, UK companies. So we are working as, as a team quite efficiently and uh, things have been very, very, um, very good um, over the last, last uh, nine months. Then. Yeah. But we so you've been doing this since January? Absolutely, yes. yeah, honestly, pre-Brexit. So what, 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 what do you think, exists. what is the biggest take out? What is your biggest learning that you'd pass on to one of your customers since you've been doing it, since, you know, now getting ready for January, what's your big message to them? Uh, my big me my, the, the big message is that there is absolutely uh, no, um, uh, there's, it's, it's, it's really possible for them to keep on operating in the EU uh, without, within a very uh, short time frame. It's just uh, a matter of being uh, well organized and know about the process. Um, uh, as an example, we're still talking to companies, UK companies, that haven't uh, sold anything in the EU since the 1st of Jan. Okay. But thanks to our solutions, some of them are ready to re-operate in the EU okay. without, with, within a two, a, two, a, two, a two weeks frame, a time frame. This, this is possible. But they need to have the right process. So uh, the best recommendation we can give them is to talk to us and uh, uh, we'll be happy to organize it for, for them. And my biggest tip to anyone who's selling to the EU or involved in that border is get out to the two ports, Dover and Calais, and see the process in real life. Okay. A lot of people theoretically understand they're meant to do this and they're meant to do that, but actually walking through it and being able to see it with their own eyes gives another depth of meaning. And we ran a tour probably three weeks ago where nearly 80 exporters uh, came, and we've got another one in, in November where I think just over 100 have signed up to it. So broadly, our biggest advice is get on one of these tours and really understand the process to know what really is, needs to happen. It's been fantastic to speak to you about exporting with the DDP process and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.